The largest Ionian island is Kefalonia, with an area of 737 square kilometers. From Zakynthos, you can take a ferry at Skinari to Posada, the harbour of Kefalonia. Then the bus will take you through Mount Ainos, which is the home of the rare black pines. A must-see landmark of Kefalonia is the Drogorati Caves, which is the home to extraordinary stalactite formations. The cave is also famous for its great hall that has an excellent acoustics, where also Maria Callas performed a while back. Stalactites are actually layered calcite formations precipitated from dripping mineralized water solutions present in karst caves. So, they are highly remarkable, multi-shaped versions of the mineral that consists of the material of limestone. Stalactite, helicite, moon milk, bisolite and aragonite are all minerals formed in such caves. Their special brilliance, rich colors and endless variety of shapes capture ordinary visitors and fanatic cave researchers alike. The gems of the caves are capricious in granting their rewards. Those interested in them can never be sure if their efforts will be worth it. Our next stop is Melisani, home to a cave lake with 20,000 year old stalactite columns on the shore. This is one of the most famous attractions of Kefalonia. The water dazzles in unbelievable colours in the sunlight that filters through the gaping hole on top of the 30 metre, partly collapsed rock cave. The cave is not far from the harbour of Fiscardo, but Austrian geologists proved that there is salty water gushing from a rift through an undersea suction inlet near Argostoli, at the southern shore of the island. You can marvel at the sights of the cave from a boat. This is where the movie Captain Corelli's Mandolin was shot. The story, starring Nicolas Cage and Penelope Cruz, takes place in World War II and is about the romantic love between an Italian soldier and a local girl. The harbour of Sami is the port for the large ferries and packet boats arriving from Athens Piraeus. The great earthquake of 1953 that destroyed Zakynthos also knocked down the houses in Kefalonia. Maybe this is also a reason why the island has become an increasingly popular destination. It is highly preferred by British and Italian tourists. The latter often come here to remember their ancestors who died here in the World War. Today, the island is accessible by ferry and by plane, but the local bus transportation is rather poor. If you do not wish to rent a car or a scooter, you can take small motor barges to the beach towns. Next to the capital, the towns of Argostoli, Sami and Lixuri are worth paying a visit. Assos is popular because of the Venetian fortress, while Fiscardo is a picturesque fishing village. The latter was named after the adventurer Robert Giscard, who died of typhus here. Lord Byron, the memories of whom will be found everywhere by world travellers, spent months in Kefalonia. There is a memorial marble plaque here, with his own words engraved on it. If I am a poet, the air of Greece has made me one. With the endless blue in front of us, we are sitting here on a bench at the beach, wrapped in salt water scented mildness, with a stone rail at our feet and the thrashing sea down below. I'm just watching, until my eyes get dazzled, this infinity that has attracted me back again this summer. I knew already the first time we met that it got a hold of me, as I would be unhappy if once in a while I could not see that flashing, that passion, that complete irregularity of the nervous and that strict regularity of the calm sea. Every emotion and nice rule and discipline is there contained in those waves," wrote the great Hungarian author Magda Szabó in her literary travel journal titled On Zeus's Doorstep.